welcome to Exchange for Media. As we continue to fight COVID-19, it has been one of the toughest years for the global economy. Every brand, irrespective of sector, had to reinvent itself in these challenging and absolutely unpredictable times. All of this makes this year's WPP Brand G 2020 report even more interesting and crucial for each one of us. We speak to Dr. Mr. David Roth, CEO of the store WPP EMEA and Asia, and Chairman of Brand Z to understand more about emerging trends. Welcome to the show, Mr. Roth. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be uh, with you. I wish I could be uh, in India in person, but uh, as, you've, have you, as you've explained, uh, we're in uh, very unusual times. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I could just uh, go through the uh, insight, uh, some highlights of the report. And uh, it says that India's top brands performed well against other countries, uh, where declines in total brand value were much greater. So what were some of the factors that worked for these Indian brands? Well, let's just give a little bit of uh, sort of context. Um, in the uh, uh, in number of studies we've now done uh, for brand valuations, um, probably about six or seven during the height of the COVID period. Um, and we've seen a various dif varying different degrees of uh, uh, total valuation uh, growth and decline uh, over those countries. I think India in balance uh, has done reasonably well. I, um, um, a um, decline of uh, around 6%. Um, I think that um, one of the reasons that uh, uh, we haven't seen a greater decline in India than we have in other markets is the strength uh, of Indian brands, in particular, um, a key component of brand value growth, which is their uh, meaningfulness uh, and uh, the way in which the brand is also well differentiated. And I think that is a testament to um, the strength and the quality of brand building in India and the history, indeed, of brand building in India um, over a number of years. And I suppose there lies a critical point, which is the amount of money, the investment that you make in building a brand um, has an amazing payback. Um, it uh, not only helps you uh, recover faster, um, but it also helps you during the difficult times. We saw that um, at the um, economic crisis the world economic crisis a number of years ago, that strong brands um, recovered faster. And I think we're going to see exactly the same uh, as we start to join the glide path out of the COVID period that we're in. So that's also my next question. Uh, again, the report says that, you know, trusted brands uh, have weathered the crisis better than brands with a low trust index. So as per the report, Airtel is one such brand that showed a significant growth in India uh, during the pandemic. So globally, which are the brands that have been able to achieve the same and what uh, what can Indian brands learn from this? Yeah, I think on a global level, it's been quite interesting because the top 100 most valuable global brands, uh, which uh, the valuation was launched pretty much at the peak um, of um, the growth in the, in the pandemic, um, grew at around 5.8%, uh, so that's a positive growth. Um, and uh, that growth um, is, uh, in, in sort of value terms, about 275 billion uh, US dollars. Um, now, I think the, the big difference uh, in the global is that uh, if you look at the top 10 global brands and our brands in the top 100 versus the top 10 in India, um, for global, we see many, many more um, digital e-commerce and technology brands in the top 10. And of course, those brands um, have performed um, well over the recent months because the world has accelerated um, the digital transformation that was well underway post COVID. And I think that's probably one of the key lessons that we can all learn uh, from the period that we are in in the last few months is uh, how important it is to put your foot on the accelerator of uh, the digital transformations that were probably going on inside your business. 
um, but uh, both from a consumer perspective and also from a business efficiency perspective, uh, those investments in technology and being able to have a direct relationship with your consumers um, is going to be something that uh, all businesses are going to need to accelerate over the course of the next uh, two years. So, uh, so you, you're an industry expert. Uh, what are some of the key steps that marketers and brands must take to build trust with the new and evolved consumer? Because this is a new, you know, this is a new socially distant world that we are going to, uh, we have entered in. So, what are some of the new uh, steps that marketers must take now? Well, of course, trust um, has always been a key pillar in what and what in what defines a brand and also what it defines a valuable brand. But I think that uh, our experiences over the course of the last a few months, and I think the experiences that we're going to have for the rest of the year, is going to redefine a little bit about uh, what we now mean by trust. Um, a number of things that brands did that were very invisible to us, um, especially on sort of health and safety, um, those aspects of what they do are going to have to become much more visible and I think that's going to build trust. One of the things that we've seen in India and also across the world is that uh, despite, uh, and I say that uh, in a positive way, despite the um, difficulties that everybody ha has had, it hasn't taken consumers' eye and mind of how important it is to for companies and brands to operate in both an ethical way and also a way that is good uh, or lessens their impact on the environment. And I also believe that that's also going to be a very important ingredient uh, within uh, what makes up brand trust going forward as well. And then the third uh, area, um, which is uh, equally important, is the whole notion of uh, transparency. Uh, the way in which organizations, companies and brands work um, uh, is becoming more and more under the microscope um, consumers really do uh, look to see how brands behave versus uh, uh, their claims and where there is gaps between the two that's going to that has been exposed in the past and that's going to be exposed in the future. Um, they are those I think are the three key ingredients and uh, I would add one more in the spirit of what this next element is. Uh, and that um, is value. Um, I think uh, more and more consumers are going to be much more careful about where and how they spend their money and will be looking for greater value propositions. And uh, brands are going to have to uh, interrogate their products until it confesses um, their value superiority and then make sure that that's very, very well explained and communicated. Uh, to uh, their consumers. Going forward, uh, uh, how important do you think uh, uh, will be the role of Martech? Well, um, I think uh, um, the way in which uh, we as communicators and the way in which consumers consume information and uh, and data um, it's clearly uh, in the um, fundamental stages of change. I think one of the uh, key uh, observations that you can make is that some of the trends that were either appearing or there, if you really looked and uh, carefully before the COVID uh, period um, uh, um, was there, um, those trends are being accelerated now. And the ability to be able to really understand who your consumers are, uh, to mine the data that is coming out of uh, all the various different digital communications that you can have with your consumers in a way that is open and transparent that consumers give their approval and permission for. Uh, and then to be able to use technology tools uh, to um, uh, um, be able to put in front of the consumer at exactly the right time, at the right place, context sensitive um, uh, messages, information that the consumer finds useful and valuable is going to be one of the defining things 
that will differentiate those successful brands and marketeers uh, from those who are going to struggle um, in the years ahead. So that more tech stack is going to be a vital ingredient in business performance and uh, being able to have a meaningful, valued relationship between yourself and your customers in both directions. So as for the report, and even we all have been observing some sectors like OTT platforms or uh, uh, sectors that are involved in digital, like MasterCard has appeared in your uh, top uh, 10 brands or TikTok. So uh, going forward in 2021 also, do you think they'll be able to hold these positions or it's just a momentary uh, thing because of the lockdown and the COVID? Um, no, I think uh, I think they will be held on to their positions. Um, obviously, the year on year growth won't be as uh, stunning and spectacular as it was in 2020. But I think there are a number of uh, non returnable gates that we've gone through as consumers in the world, which uh, we consume um, entertainment, uh, the way in which we consume uh, media, the way in which we uh, which we uh, shop. Um, and uh, I think that those brands are very well placed to take advantage of that. Of course, there will be some normalization of it. I think one of the key things that we're beginning to see um, through data from um, a, a number of uh, uh, people who track um, web uh, traffic um, is uh, the fact that uh, whilst web traffic has uh, is declining over the course of the last few months, uh, last, last month or so, um, as um, lockdown in many parts of the world becomes less um, uh, aggressive, um, that uh, web traffic is declining. But what has maintained um, uh, significantly above the COVID um, rates is um, the transactions that are being made uh, on the web and the conversion rates. And I think uh, those type of things are signals to the fact that consumers uh, have undergone a fundamental change in some of their habits and behaviours um, and uh, probably won't return to exactly the same way as before, which means that uh, marketeers around the world um, are also going to have to be much sharper um, in the way they change and refine uh, their, uh, their marketing strategies. Uh, Mr. Top, you must have been involved in preparing reports of other countries also. Uh, so, if we, uh, if I would want to ask you, you know, how uh, is India? I mean, where is India better, and where is India weak? I mean, where do you think Indian uh, marketers or Indian brands need to work? So, if you can just uh, give us a comparative thing on that. Sure. Well, that's a very interesting question. I think one of the things that's always um, uh, surprised me in a positive way about working in India with uh, uh, our Indian colleagues and our Indian clients is the amazing amount of both uh, intellectual uh, ability uh, that they have uh, and also uh, just uh, a, a sort of a can-do attitude and a very positive outlook uh, on uh, life and circumstances and I think those three things have been very important uh, in the way in which uh, Indian brands have responded to the challenges that uh, nobody really could have predicted um, at, uh, at the end of 2019, which overall uh, was a pretty good year when you look back at it for uh, brands uh, right across the world. I think uh, the areas uh, where um, India um, has some catching up to do in other markets around the world is in I suppose the 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 e-commerce space although frankly the speed with which that's happened over the last few months and also over the last couple of years has been quite dramatic in India so that is very impressive but there is some catch up uh, still to do uh, and um, the um, uh, digitization of uh, processes and procedures uh, in order to make things significantly more simple and quick for the consumers. One of the uh, intriguing trends that was definitely around well before COVID for the last few years, um, but is one of those trends that has been accelerated on steroids, um, and that's despite the fact that consumers have uh, had lots of time at home. They might have had time uh, at home, but they haven't had a lot of time in home 
in a sense to do everything they want to do so those brands that can simplify things can make their businesses simple make their propositions simple make it very easy for the consumers to understand and get hold of those products to reduce the amount of time and friction that the consumer has to go through in order to complete something uh, that i think is also going to be amazingly important and in that area um, india has some catching up to do uh, but i have every confidence in the skill ingenuity of uh, indian uh, marketeers uh, and uh, the way in which they go about doing things that uh, that gap uh, will soon uh, disappear uh, so uh, mr Ruff, before we close uh, um, i would want to understand from you that what are some of the long-term changes transformations and not just in the digital space but in the working of the overall business that we can expect post covid in india and globally well um i think if one takes a helicopter view um as i said uh 2019 was uh, a good uh, year on average uh, but i think we're all realizing that uh, it's pretty unlikely that we're going to uh, um, retailers and brands and manufacturers are going to um, have as much turnover in uh, uh, for the next sort of two to three years uh, that, than they had in 2019. So businesses do need to be uh, re-engineered. Um, businesses do need to become significantly uh, more efficient. Um, and businesses do need to get really, really close uh, to uh, their consumers. Um, and there are many different ways in which that can happen. Um, I know that uh, most uh, uh, far-sighted brands now are looking at ensuring they have a direct-to-consumer channel within their routes to market because we've found over this period how important it is to be able to do things directly between you and your consumer uh, without uh, um, relying on uh, other intermediaries, intermediaries that might not the same, have the same priorities uh, as uh, you have in, a difficult, in difficult periods. Um, I think it's slightly too early to tell now what consumer uh, attitudes and behaviours uh, are uh, fundamentally going to completely change versus what will snap back in one form or another to behaviours that we all exhibited without really thinking about it uh, in December and January. I think the jury is still out on that. Uh, and uh, as uh, eager watchers um, of uh, consumer trends, of understanding how uh, consumers relate to brands via the uh, brands and data and our WPP uh, data sets. Uh, we will be looking very closely uh, for all the signs of where change is happening and how it's happening uh, to enable uh, marketeers to quickly adapt and be much more flexible. Uh, the only way that all of us can do that um, is uh, amazing speed and I think that's one of the skills uh, that we're all going to have to hone and refine and sharpen up. We've learned a lot of new skills all of us over the course of the last uh, um, few months that we didn't know that we either had or we didn't know that we needed uh, but the ability to work fast, work in teams that are uh, not all in the same place uh, and uh, to maybe get things 70 to 80 percent uh, correct and, and done and completed and implemented um, uh, fast is much better than 98% uh, 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 complete but just takes you too long to get there and the time you've got there the consumer has moved and changed. Thank you so much Mr. Ross for this insightful interview and the report that has come out and uh, we hope to get back to you soon once your data scientists have put all those insights together on consumer behavior and we would also be interested in understanding that from you. Thank you yeah. again for speaking to us. It's a pleasure, I very much uh, look forward to that and uh, please do go to brandz.com and download the report. Uh, I'm sure you will find it uh, unbelievably insightful uh, for yeah. businesses. Thanks very much indeed, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you, thanks a lot.